Hello fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. That's right, the Shochaku Henshin line is back with Kamen Rider Gachard 1, Steam Hopper, and Apare Skebo, and Ant Wrestler. I like how these names are kind of fancy and then just Ant Wrestler. I don't know, I love it, it's funny. But in any case, this is kind of a cool set. You get one base figure and then you get three sets of armor so you can make all three of these forms. I also kind of like how they've done this here where it's Sochaku Hen Shin and then the Shin's in a different color because Shin also means new and because they're relaunching the line so it's a fun pun. Very interesting, very neat. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of cool. So I uh, didn't really get into Rider Toys until the old uh, Sochaku Henshin line had died out and they started just kind of doing like a specific line for each series, like the arms change for Gaim, etc., etc. So this is kind of my first foray into Sochaku Henshin, so we'll check it out. Uh, front of the packaging here just has some product shots of the three forms. You got Gachard hanging out here in the back. Up top here we got uh, the three forms, the helmets for the three forms. Not really anything going on at the bottom. Over here we have Steam Hopper. Over here we have the contents, so you have the like little, basically when you put the armors together, kind of like the little CGI models you see on the show. And then of course you have the figure, you get three sets of hands, and then the uh, Got Charge gun. Spinning it around to the back, uh, shows you how you can combine them. It says that you can mix and match them if you want. I'm not personally going to do that, but it is possible, of course, to move some of the pieces around. Um... Yeah, just not for me. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and get everything out of the packaging here and we'll take a closer look. So here is the main figure and the three sets of armor. I'm going to take a look at the three sets of armor first, then kind of put them to the side. We'll take a look at the main figure and the few other accessories that come in the box, and then we'll start doing the combinations. So uh, first up, we have Steam Hopper. Uh, I will be honest, these, as the little armor buddies, don't hold together all that well but they do secure very nicely onto the figure, which is good. Um, Steam Hopper's actually not too bad. The head here is a little loose because there's this kind of really loose ball joint here at kind of the base of the neck. Um, and then you kind of have like the mouth that can open and close, which is kind of funny. Uh, you can see that the scarf here runs along the bottom of the abdomen and a lot of things peg into that. Now, as a result with mine, I think it's a little warped. See, there you go. That piece just fell off. So that pegs into this here, and it doesn't stay on all that well. Uh, plus, like I said, mine's a little warped. And so, like, when I look at this, it's not straight, and I want to kind of straighten it out, but it doesn't want to. Um, but you have ball joints here, so technically you can move the legs. You can use these joints. These pieces will pop off. They just peg right back in. It's not that big a deal. Uh, these back feet pieces can move so you can kind of put it in more of a grasshopper configuration, something like that. Um, then you have, again, this just, they don't stay together very well, unfortunately. Uh, you have little ball joints for these little legs as well. And then you have the head. So, I mean, it does look like a little grasshopper. I'll give them that. Um, it just, like I said, doesn't hold together very well. And there are some stickers. So each set has a sticker for the driver piece. And then when you split open the chest, there's a sticker you have to put in there. So it's two stickers per set of armor, six total. Not terrible. And they're honestly very easy to apply. Nice flat surfaces. So didn't take that long. But uh, yeah, there is Steam Hopper. Next up, we have uh, Apure Skebo, which I feel like holds together the worst. When I just look at this, it falls apart. Um, plus, what the hell is it? I mean, honestly, I don't know what this is supposed to be in terms of like a little buddy or something. I don't, I don't know. But uh, the helmet just kind of rests on top of here. So this is coming off all the time. Uh, this chest piece kind of pegs into the back of the driver. This comes off a lot. And then pretty much any time you touch this, the helmet's going to fall off. But again, I don't feel like these little modes are all that important. Because I honestly don't care about the little buddies. I would rather just have... Like, it secures onto the figure well. And that, to me, is what's most important. So we'll get into that in a minute. But there you go. So you got the skateboard. You got the... Um, these are going to be shin guards. You got the driver piece. 
and then this chest and armor and everything that's one solid piece and then you have the scarf just kind of hanging out i don't love these scarves and honestly they're so tight that you can't really move them around all that well i feel like it's going to snap off but maybe over time that'll loosen up the scarf piece for abre scabos and ant wrestler are the exact same piece uh steam hopper has a different scarf because it's needed for the combination of the grasshopper mode next up we have ant wrestler i don't well here you go that already fell off just by touching it so i'm just going to take it off i don't know what this is are these supposed to be tiny hands and tiny feet is this supposed to be like a wrestling person i don't know what this is it's very strange to me these pieces are very strange but you need them to connect the uh, ant pieces. So, like, the arms are just supposed to be ants, and I get that, and that works. And he just has, like, ant drones, I guess. I just, I don't, I don't like these little buddy forms. I don't like them on the show. I don't need the CGI. I wish he would just transform straight into the rider form, and I don't need any of this, but... I guess it's a neat way to store the armor so it's not just a pile of pieces. I don't know. But yeah, that's it. So that's these. They're okay. Like I said, they look much better as armor. We'll get to that in a moment. I can't... You can't even look at these and they just fall apart. I don't care. Move it. Move it over. Move it. There we go. Okay. Let's look at the figure. Um, the figure is not without its own problems. So the head looks a little goofy, but luckily you don't really need it um, in this form by itself. Now, the way the neck works... At the base of the skull, I can move it up and down. I feel like I should be able to turn it, but it really doesn't want to. So maybe that's just a rocker. And then, of course, you can move it at the base of the neck as well, and you can kind of turn it at the base of the neck, but not a ton. So you don't have a great range of motion there. Shoulders are nice. Shoulders go all the way up. Rotation, no problem there. Bicep swivel, no problem. Elbows are good. Uh, you have a ball joint for the fist. Now, as you can see, he comes in the box with a closed set of fists. Pop those right off. He also comes with an open set of hands, so he can grasp his blaster, the Got Charge gun. Pop on very easily. And he also comes with kind of a, like, open, stylized, posing set of hands. So, you get two of these. You get two of these. And then you get the two fists. So that's six hands total, which I think is pretty cool. I'm happy with that. I think that's a nice, uh, you know, nice bit of hands, <laughs> I guess we'll say. Uh, silver paint on the front does not extend to the back. That's kind of a bummer, but at least it does here for the shoulders. So I appreciate that. Again, driver belt. I feel like they could have they sprung for the little bit of orange paint to do that all the way around. But again, whatever. Um... Let's see, we have a waist swivel, nothing in the abdomen. Uh, hips can kick pretty far forward, kick really far out to the side, can't really go back at all because of the butt flap. And there are no thigh swivels. It's like they stole the uh, the engineering from the uh, Ultra ultra figure. Wow, what? Can I, I'm blanking on what this is called, the Ultraman figures. <laughs> I'm like, my brain's blanking. But anyway... I don't know why they don't have thigh swivels. They absolutely should have thigh swivels. I think that's silly. That's kind of basic articulation at this point. I mean, you can get a little bit of movement at the actual hip. Um, but it's just weird and awkward, and I don't know why they don't have proper thigh swivels. Ultra action figure. It's well, it's not even hard. Ultra action figure. What's wrong with me? Anyway, and then you got knee. Got a knee bend there. And you got a ball joint for the ankle it's kind of like a little beveled now here's the problem with this at least for me the hips are loose the hips are loose i want him to stand he starts doing the splits he falls down i don't care for that the other thing is he doesn't stand very well because you can see how this plastic piece here right there and you can see it in the back as well the the tops of the feet hit into it so you can't bend him at the foot any more forward than that or any more back than that. And that's dumb. It's like there's a piece there that you can tell they wanted to do away with. But I guess the ball joint wouldn't pop in there if they did. I don't know. But that hits into that. And that hits into it the other way. So you can get like nothing out of the ankles. They give you ball joint ankles. And then you can't do anything with them. It's really stupid. 
and it really bums me out. Um, you kind of have to like work around it. So like if I put him in kind of a weird squat pose like this, he can kind of stand unless his hips decide to get loose and then he just goes down. So that's my problem with these. Um, they don't stand significantly well, which is, you know, something that I need my action figures to do. He does, of course, come with the Got Charge gun, which has some nice molding, but is done in the one solid light gray color. Would have been nice to get the tiniest little bit of paint or just mold this whole thing in orange. Would have been nice considering the gun is mostly orange and is not light gray at all. But it does fit into his hand. He does actually grasp it pretty well. So I appreciate that. So not the worst figure I've ever seen. Certainly not the best. Let's go ahead. Let's get some armors attached. All right, so we're going to start off with our base form of Steam Hopper. You're going to go ahead and grab this and pop that off right there. It's just a very simple peg that pegs into this. Then you're going to unattach this section. Then you're going to unattach this section that fell off earlier. And then these pieces here on the bottom will actually split. They're pegged into the sides here. So now you have this scarf piece with all of these ridiculous looking pegs and peg slots and it just looks really stupid. I'm sorry, that looks really weird. I get what they're going for, but that looks weird. So you have a couple options. If you want, you can try, or no, this one doesn't have it. Okay, so you have to peg it. You can peg it into either the arms. You could do something like this, or you could just go ahead and pop it right onto this spot in the back in the center. That's kind of what I like to do. But again, it's a little tight. It's loosening up. The more I use it, it loosens up a little bit, so it is getting better. But at first, I was kind of worried that I was going to twist the plastic and not move the ball joint. So it is getting a little better. But that just looks really weird hanging off the back. At least if there was a way that you could kind of swivel this around so that, like, this was the part of the scarf that I saw and it was facing the back, I don't think I'd mind as much. But clearly not the case. So let's go ahead, start taking these apart. You're actually going to pop these pieces off their ball joints. So that's going to pop off of there, and that's going to pop off of there. So we have our driver piece, which will peg into the belt. You can see that there is a large tab slot right there, and there's a large tab here. So pop that right on. Very easy. We're going to take, we'll do the legs next. Kind of straighten these out a little bit and you can see that they have these kind of l-shaped tabs which will tab into these spots here on the shin and so you just push this in and it really pegs in pretty deeply and snugly to the point that i almost had a hard time getting them out again i was afraid i was gonna break the tab off but then you'll bend this and kind of push the foot in so when you bend the knee this won't naturally like you'll have to kind of push this back down but it honestly form fits pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. And like I said, it's not it's not falling off anytime soon because that peg is really deeply connected into the shin there. So we're going to pop this one in as well. And it's kind of just like the show. In the show, we watch it come apart and connect to the body in very much this way. So we have our legs done. We're going to take... So these were those little pieces on the bottom, and they actually are going to peg into these little slots here on, I should say, just above the wrists on the forearm here. And you want it to, I think it goes like this. These don't connect super well, I'm going to be honest. I have a lot of difficulty. I think I'm doing this correctly. I could be doing it backwards. I'll let you know. No, I think that's right. Yeah, that goes in like that. And then this one comes over here and pegs into this arm. It's just kind of weird to line it up and then it doesn't really... I feel like it should peg in deeper so it stays on. I haven't had difficulty with them falling off, I will say. Again, everything's really secure and snug. But I just, they look a little weird to me and I feel like they should go a little bit closer down into the forearm. Then we're going to take this section, and you can see that there is a large tab right there, which is going to go into that spot right there. So this just pops in and pegs in there. 
and then you kind of take these pieces and lift them up to reveal the sticker that you had to apply. These kind of sit back here. These you want to kind of line up with the shoulders like that. And then the last piece here is to drop the head in. Now it has this little kind of square box there, which is going to peg on this little cutout. And it's kind of hard to see, but there is a cutout here in the head. And it actually connects on very solidly. Like that's very snug. And then you just fold this down to kind of cover the back of the head. Now, unfortunately, I feel like this opens too much. You can see how that kind of opens too much, but you can kind of get it to stay about where you'd want it, maybe about there. And there we go. We have Steam Hopper. And honestly, it's not bad. It looks okay. I think that looks pretty good. I still think the scarf looks dumb, and there's, like, nothing going on on the back. But honestly... I'm happy with it. I think this is pretty good. Like I said, it's very solidly attached. That's a big thing for me because I remember back with the Zero One figures, the armor just fell off when you looked at it, and that is not the case here. While they may not hold together very well in the smaller armor forms, they attach to the figure very well, and they're very solidly connected, and you don't really lose any articulation. You can still move the shoulders. You might have to reposition these a little bit, but it's really not a problem. The legs, you know, you lose a little bit of out to the side, but not a ton. It kind of will ride up and, and still let you do it. Um, the ankles are still kind of as worthless as they were, but it's a, it's a decent looking form. Honestly, I think they did a pretty good job. Like I said, only two stickers, so that's really not that big a deal. Got the gun. And like I said, sometimes you might have to just close this up a little bit because sometimes it'll open up and just, I don't know, it's not terrible, but that looks like it's down a little bit too much, so close that up a little bit. So yeah, honestly, I think the scarf still looks goofy, but other than that, and the other, there we go, get him to, can we get him to stand? There we go, a little squat pose. Not too bad. All right, moving on now to Opera Escabos. We are going to take this, the helmet pops off, take, that piece is going to come off, take the scarf piece off, and you can kind of bring the shoulder pads down like so. We can go ahead and peg this same kind of thing as a uh, steam hoppery of the peg here that goes into the chest piece. And so that will peg in very simply and then just position the shoulder pads. And then you can go ahead and open up the chest section. Again, there's one of your stickers. They all have the same kind of fire effect. It's kind of a yellow into red gradient just so you can see that. Okay, so we got our chest pad on there. Gonna take the helmet, that's gonna pop on the same as the other one, peg into that spot on the head, if I can line it up correctly, there we go. You can see this one fits the head a lot better than the other one does, although it's not. I swear I didn't have trouble with this earlier. There we go. Now we take these pieces, unpeg this, you're going to kind of twist this slightly just so that they'll come apart. Then you're going to take these pieces off the side of the driver piece, flip this piece down, and then this will peg onto the belt the same way the last one did. Very simple there. Take these pieces and peg them onto the shins. They have the L shape. Now the way it's a little weird because you can see it kind of looks like a weird Tetris piece there, but they will fit. So you just find whichever one they fit into and peg that in there. Peg the other one in here. Because the weird shape is kind of acting as pegging into the side of the driver, but also into the shins. And then you're just going to slide the foot. You're going to use this spot here to peg into the bottom of the foot. So kind of slide the foot in and then peg that into the bottom of the foot. Like so. Where is the hole on that one? There we go. And then you can pop the scarf in again. You could do, I guess these are kind of covered, but you could put it in either of these. I like to just connect it to the center piece. And this one looks a little bit less ridiculous because it doesn't have as many weird pieces hanging off of it. It doesn't need to be used for connections. And there you go. There is Apres Skebo. 
Um, it's all right. I think the helmet's nice. It's got some good paint applications. Chess has some good paint applications. Again, two stickers, one for the driver, one for that. He doesn't have anything for the forearms. Uh, he doesn't have any weapons. I wish he had a sword of some kind. That would be cool. But other than that, he's okay. I mean, the wheels do work. He does kind of skate. But again, because the feet are kind of weird, it's hard to get him in a great skating pose where he'll also stand. There we go, maybe. So. Not bad. I wish he had a weapon. But other than that, works pretty well. Again, the back is rather empty, but I'm okay with it. I don't know, something about the helmet, it just, I don't know if it's the proportions or what, it's a little goofy to me, and I feel like it doesn't look that way on the show, but I don't know, something about it's just a little, a little goofy, but overall, I think he looks pretty good. Last up, we got Ant Trooper. Uh, so we have these two ant pieces, which are going to be covering the arms. And they look pretty cool. I actually think they did a nice job painting those. They are pretty much identical. So we're going to put them off to the side. And then we have this thing, and I'm not really sure what's going on here. I know these pieces are connected, but again, I don't know if this is supposed to be like a little foot and a little hand. And this is supposed to be a wrestling guy. I don't know. But this connects on the front. Very similar to the way that piece connected to the like bottom abdomen for Abre Skebos. And then we're going to just lift the helmet. That just kind of sits in a little track right there. And then we can go ahead and open this because that really doesn't do anything but I like the little the little bell the little start of the match bell there in the middle I think that's really cool so what I usually do with these you can unpeg these and you can see they have like a u-clip because otherwise they're kind of impossible to line up and then you can see that there's a clip under here and so I like to just go ahead and snap that clip on now and then come back and peg this on like that because trying to, like, push this on here is... I mean, it's not the most difficult thing in the world. Let's see if I can just do it. Mm. There you go. Okay, so that clipped on. It's not so much hard to clip it on, but to take it off, it's almost impossible. So to take it off, I would definitely just recommend unclipping it, pull that piece off, and then clip it back in. So then what we're going to do is peg this into the chest the same way we did with all the others. So pop this on, and then you kind of bend this to match the arm. So let me get this in the correct position here. Why are you being difficult? There we go. Okay, so now he's got his arms attached. Uh, that's the majority of it, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> you take the belt piece, you're going to rotate these 90 degrees just so that they're kind of in line. And then you're going to flip that little piece down and then just peg that on like all the others. So peg that in. And then the helmet, you're going to rotate the jaw around like that, and then this will just peg onto the top of the head like all the others. So pop that on there, and there you go. We have Ant Wrestler. I think this form is really cool. I think this one came out really great. Everything connects very nicely. It actually covers the whole arm, so you don't really notice that the back is that empty. I'm sorry, I forgot he also has a scarf piece. This is the exact same scarf piece from... Uh, opera escabos. They give you two of them, but they're exactly the same. But yeah, I think this is great. It's a great color scheme. It looks good. Uh, the helmet fits nicely. The arms look great. Just, I think, honestly, I think this one's, I want to say the most successful, but it's very successful. I think this one looks good. I think it's kind of a tie between this one and Steam Hopper for me. 
Um, Opera Escabos is definitely my least favorite, but that's not to say it's terrible. But I just this one I just think looks really really cool. I love the colors. It's got a lot of nice paint on it, and it just I think it came out great. Now obviously this can limit articulation because of the way that these are connected, but you can kind of lift them up if you want to move the arm around, and then you can try to you know match it as best you can. Maybe it won't completely form fit but you can kind of make it work, at least get it to a close approximation. And also, I really like the helmet. I think that's really fun. Again, beautiful color scheme, really nice paint applications. I think they kind of went all out for this one. I think it looks great. So honestly, at the end of the day, it's not a bad set. There's a lot of nice paint applications. I do appreciate the fact that there's not too many stickers that you need to apply. It's really just two per set of armor. It's the driver face, and it's the kind of fire area inside. I understand that they probably couldn't do that with paint because it's a gradient, and also this would be too you know, exact with the different faces because they do match the forms so the cards are correct. So that would have been too hard to do with paint. So it either would have been left completely off or done with a sticker. And I think sticker was the correct choice. And like I said, they're nice flat surfaces. Very easy to apply. Did not take very long. Uh, I think all three of the forms are good. I definitely appreciate the fact that the armor really connects and stays connected very securely. Moving the figure around doesn't knock it off. Because I know I had a lot of problems with that Zero One set. You would peg the armor in and then you'd kind of like pick up the figure and all of it would just fall right off. And it was really cheap and it was really frustrating. And this is not that way at all. I think these really came out nice. The only things that don't stay together super well are these little like armor buddy forms. Um, Steam Hopper's not terrible, although I will say this part with the driver comes off fairly easily. Um, and Troopers... It's okay. Uh, Opera Esquibo is literally just if I pick it up at all, the helmet's going to come off or this piece is going to come disconnected from the driver. That just comes apart all the time. But again, I don't care about these forms. This is just kind of a way to store the armor when you're not using it. It's not the main draw of the toy. Obviously, you're getting a figure and you can get three different armored forms out of it, and I think that's really cool. The figure itself has some issues. The hips are a little loose. I showed you the thing with the ankles. That's not really great because that limits articulation. So it's not a perfect set, but I do think there's fun to be had here. Uh, and the box does also talk about mix and match uh, capabilities where you could, you know, give it the legs of Steam Hopper maybe with the torso of Ant Trooper, or you could take the shoulders off and mix it with the shoulders of uh I, i'm not into that kind of stuff so i'm not going to do it but it is possible the box does show that off so you could also make your own combinations or something down the line i don't know uh but like i said i feel like there are better you know gimmick figures i always go back to arms change i feel like that was kind of the standard that was really the best in my opinion now is that because i love gaim or because the figures are really that great it's been a few years, I don't know, but I kind of remember them being a lot of fun. I think these are good too, honestly. I think these have potential. I'll have to wait until I can get my hands on the first Soto set to see how that measures up because it's usually for me kind of Soto versus gimmick figure for the year, which one comes out on top. Uh, this one has very light stickers, so it's already got one thing up on Soto. We'll see how it goes. But it's kind of a pricier set as well. I kind of think this was somewhere in the area of like, 30 to 40 dollars before shipping if i'm remembering correctly i think it was at least 30 dollars um which again it's not terrible i mean you do get uh three sets of hands which is nice you get the accessory i do kind of wish this was molded out of orange or maybe had a little bit of paint on it or something um but i feel like there's a lot of paint between the three forms i think they did a pretty good job there yeah, I'm honestly, I'm pretty happy with it. It's not blowing me away, but I think I'm pretty happy with it. I think the price is somewhat fair for what you get. You do get a decent amount with this set. So I think it's worth checking out. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.